Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Well, hey there, everybody, and happy Turkey Day. Catherine, happy Turkey Day. Thank you. Same to you. <laughs> Catherine and I are going to talk about Thanksgiving today, but not just uh, not just the American or, I guess, the North American version. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're talking specifically about harvest festivals and the idea of giving thanks for the the fall harvest. Yeah. And that is something that is celebrated all around the world and has been for just centuries. Just to start it off, we're going to talk about the American uh, version, the one that is probably most familiar to uh, at least people in the U.S. <laughs> most famously known as Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, exactly. And, you know, if you're not from the U.S. and you're listening, we're going to just give you a little backstory on it. You know, as you probably know, the pilgrims arrived on the Mayflower and they were weak with hunger. And um, there was an Indian called Squanto who actually taught them how to grow corn and basically saved their lives got through the winter and so after the corn harvest was successful there was a feast between his tribe and the pilgrims just to celebrate you know that they had made it through and um, you know give thanks for surviving. Yeah so it wasn't just an excuse to kind of you know get together <laughs> with your family and like eat like crazy. It, yeah, it was like thank God we made it through this. We, exactly and I'm you not know? even sure turkey was on the menu yet you know but um, there were other things to eat of course corn and things that were native to that area. Yeah harvest food. Exactly exactly. This brings us to another, speaking of American holidays, there's another one that people may not think in the harvest vein, but that's the Kwanzaa Festival. And uh, that was created in 1966 uh, by uh, a gentleman called Dr. Molana Karenga, who was a professor of Africana Studies. And he modeled it after harvest festivals and celebrations in ancient Africa. And uh, it's celebrated between uh, Christmas and New Year. That, that whole week is given over to it. Yeah, and this is cool. I didn't really know too much about... I, I didn't even know that Kwanzaa was a harvest festival. Yeah, honestly. yeah. But, like, the, the more you start to read about it, the quickly you realize that that is a central part of it. I mean, it's about community. Mm-hmm. For example, the word Kwanzaa comes from a Swahili phrase that means first fruits. There you go. So it's all about celebrating that. Now, Kwanzaa is more of a cultural holiday. Uh-huh, um, right. But a lot of harvest festivals will bring in a religious element. Mm -hmm. Another one on the list is Sukkot, which is the Jewish harvest festival, also known as the the festival of booths or tabernacles. Exactly. So um, Sukkot is a a week-long festival. It Mm -hmm. takes place five days after Yom Kippur, which is a very solemn Jewish holiday. Mm -hmm. And then you have Sukkot, which is a much more joyous occasion. But basically the idea is that um, Jewish people build this hut or this booth, which is called a sukkah, um, in which they're supposed to um, dwell. Yeah, and they do it as a remembrance for, it's to commemorate the 40 years that the Israelites were in the wilderness. You know, it's a remembrance of that time when they had to live in tents. So, so that's the story behind it. And it's always celebrated, as you said, at the end of harvest. And um, one thing I thought that was interesting is they actually have no pop-up sukkahs you can buy, the pop-up tents. So, you know, if you're in, for instance, in, in the war, for Iraq war, they've sent some over there so they can celebrate sukkah right there. Yeah, that's pretty pretty um pretty inventive. Yeah, exactly. Sort of keeping up with the times, I guess. Yeah, evolving. yeah. Evolving. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, another harvest festival that is uh, very popular is um, China's um, Mid Autumn Festival, mm-hmm. which is also it goes by a bazillion names: the Moon Festival, <laughs> the Mooncake Festival. But basically, it's a harvest festival, and it's it's lunar, so it's celebrated on the fifteenth day of the eighth month of the Chinese lunar calendar which is either in September or sometime in early October. Yeah, and it has a whole tradition to behind it, right? It was to celebrate the moon goddess, I believe. And um, th- there's several stories behind... It's very moon-themed. Very moon-themed, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. Um, you know, people will, will uh, take time to gaze at the moon, because as you said, it was always on a full moon. And um, they'll, they'll write poems to the moon goddess. And they eat these things called moon cakes. And they're basically pastry... And they're filled with a variety of things. Uh, one thing is uh, an egg yolk, which is salty, is one thing that would be filled mm. with. Yeah, which I hear is an acquired taste. And yeah, yeah I'm not imagine. Sh- yeah, I'm not sure if I would like that, but it basically symbolizes the full moon, you know, of course. Cause okay, it's right. Round and then, or you might put a red bean paste in it, or a lotus seed paste, it, or even green tea pastes. I've heard there are tons, you know, especially nowadays, a lot of different variations oh, of that. It'd be yeah. fun to try it, just to see yeah. what it's like. Yeah, I'd love to try that one and see. So, um, our final... Uh, Harvest Festival is kind of a unique one mm-hmm. that we sort of just stumbled upon. The Costermongers Harvest Festival in London. Yeah. And here's the history. If you're wondering 
What is a coster monger? <laughs> well, anyway, was <laughs> I keep thinking of Mira Poppins or something. Um, they were coster mongers were market traders in the market, obviously, and they wore a lot of buttons on their clothes, you know, to stand out. And there was a market sweeper called uh, Henry Croft. He'd grown up in an orphanage, and he wanted to raise money to help the orphans back there. And so he started collecting all the pearl buttons that fell off the coster mongers, and he'd sew them onto his clothes until his suit was entirely covered. That was a way for him to stand out and and you know have people spot him and give him more donations. So his tradition kind of grew into this society of folks who call themselves the pearly kings and queens right. because of their, you know, pearly outfits. Pearly outfits, yeah. And they're they're known for their charitable giving uh -huh. still. They developed this tradition of having um, this harvest festival every year, which happens in late September. They parade from one part of London always to a church, mm -hmm. but that's basically the whole the festival, I guess. It's a very, very unique, um, interesting aspect of London society that, I mean, I hadn't heard of before. Yeah, very British and very tied with the Cockney culture and this yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So kind of, kind of unique, different, very different harvest festival. <laughs> so that is kind of a global look at Thanksgiving, you know, whatever you call it, harvest festivals. And however you all celebrate it, we hope you have a great time with your family and your friends. Yes, and if you'd like to learn more about Thanksgiving, uh, check our website. We're going to have a lot of content there. And we'll see you next time for more Coolest Stuff. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email TravelPodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes. <laughs>